Hey, this video is for MAT 1100 Quantitative Reasoning. We're going to be studying section 2.1. And in this section, we're looking at different ways to analyze a set of numbers and how to describe what the most typical number is in the set. There are various ways to do that. I think what um, students are most familiar with at this given point is finding the average uh, the median and the mode, and we're going to review um, those particular ways for analyzing a set of numbers. The mean, as you probably well know, is also called the average, and all you do to find an average is just add up all the numbers and divide by the total number of elements in the set. Like for instance, um, this one, you would add these up, you would get one plus two is three plus three, and, you, and then add four and get a total. So let's see, I'll do the average right here and I'll show my work. One plus two plus three plus four. And then you're going to divide by how many numbers you see here, which there are four of them. You can add this up in your calculator. That would be three and three is six plus four is 10. 10 divided by four, and you can just put that in your calculator. Don't leave it as a fraction. Okay, so this would be 10 divided by four, 2.5. Okay, so that is one way to describe the numbers. A lot of the questions in the book, because the questions in the book are a little bit more elevated because you're being asked to interpret or analyze uh, which is the best way to de actually describe what is going on in this set of numbers. Because sometimes the average is not the best way to describe what is typically happening in that particular set of numbers. We'll get to questions like that. I'll move to some that are in the book as well. But first, let's just go over the basic mechanics of what it means to find a mean, which is what I just found. There's two different ways to call it. You could call it the mean or you can call it the average. Those mean the same thing. Then when you're doing the median, you have to remember that you're looking for the middle score, but you can only find the true middle if you list the data either from low to high, so you can go from smallest to biggest, or from biggest to smallest. Either one will allow you to find the true middle. Um, so in this particular set of numbers, you can eyeball what you think is the middle. Like perhaps you think this is the middle score, but then you see how you have two elements to the side, two numbers to the left, and only one to the right. Therefore, you're not truly in the middle by sitting on this particular number because you have more numbers over here than you do on the right-hand side. If you think this is the middle, you have the same issue. Now you only have one number over here while having two over here. So that's not the true middle either. When that happens, you're going to have to use the two scores closest to the middle and find the average. And that's how you will find the median. So right now, since there wasn't a score that was smack dab in the middle, I'm going to find the median by really applying what it means to find an average. I'm going to add these two together and then divide by how many numbers I just added together. So this would be two plus three is five, five over two, and that turns out to be 2.5. And again, you can put that in your calculator in order to convert it into decimal form like you did in chapter one, so 2.5. So we got for the average 2.5 and we also got for the median. 2.5. Okay, then we also come to what's called the mode. And though I don't introduce it until down here, here is the definition of what a mode is. It's the number that occurs most often. So if I did ask you to find the mode for this particular set of numbers, here's the set, here's a different set of numbers. We'll do all these, these operations for this set as well as this one. So if I asked you what was the mode, what is the number that occurs the most often for this particular set of numbers, they don't have to be in order or anything like that when you're doing the mode. That's only for median. There is no number here that occurs any more often than any of the others. Therefore, 
there is no mode. Okay, going with this next set of number and just practicing um, those uh, mechanics again, we're gonna do the average first. And I'll put my work right here. It would just be one plus two plus three plus four plus five. Divided by how many numbers were in this set. There's one, two, three, four, five numbers. And then we can get our calculator to help with the arithmetic. So this would be three and three is six, six and four is 10, 10 and five is 15. That's the sum that's on the top. When divided by five, that turns out to be three. So my average or what we refer to as the mean in mathematics turns out to be three. Other things that I did for the top set of numbers is the median. And remember, when you're doing the median, the numbers have to be in order, either from low to high or high to low. These are in order already. And this time, you can actually just eyeball the middle score. This appears to be in the middle. And the way that I check that I'm truly in the middle is by counting up how many numbers do I have on this side? I have two numbers on this side, and I have exactly two numbers on this side. So since you have the same amount of numbers on this side as you do over here, then you are truly at the middle. Sometimes you got to work for it, like what happened in this set of numbers. This wasn't in smack dab in the middle, and neither was this one, so I had to incorporate the two by way of the calculation that we call finding the mean or the average, whatever you want to call it. Know it by both names. So I did the median. And then as far as the mode goes, is there a mode for this set of numbers? No, there's no number that appears more than once. So there's no number that appears more often than the others. Okay, moving to this next set of numbers where you see that you have a one, a two, and a three. So if I was to ask you, what is the mode for this particular set of numbers? The mode would be none. If I ask you what the mode is for this set of numbers, there's two different modes. One appears twice, and the number two appears twice. So both of those occur just as often as the other one. So these that the number one and the number two tied for being the mode. They both appeared twice. <clears throat> so let's see, down at the bottom, we have some fill in the blanks. The mean is add up all the numbers and divide by how many num by how many, let's see. Add up all the numbers and divide by how many numbers are in the set. Don't forget, you can all, all also call this the average. The median is the list from lowest to highest, and you take the middle number. If there's an even number of data, an even number of elements, like for instance, in this set right here. See how there was one, two, three, four numbers? That's an even number of elements. Then you're gonna have to average the two middle scores. Take the average of the two middle scores. And the mode is the number that happens the most often. And here you have to order the numbers. That's important that you remember that or you might not end up with the one that's right in the middle. Order the list of data from highest to lowest. So that is the only one that you have to put them in order. Okay, moving to some problems that are actually in the book. That's all there is, is that one page from the lessons note packet. So I wanted to go into the book which is something that I typically do because I want you to see the problems at different levels. So let's uh, look at page 154 in your book and see the kind of problems 
uh, that you're doing there. The problems in the book, as you will probably see some of these online as well, the level that you're at here is that you're being asked to use your reading comprehension, to read it two or three times if you need to until you understand what the question is. Okay, so when a test has been graded and returned, students instructors are usually interested in knowing what the class average is. Like for instance, when I do post the results of your unit one test, I will talk about what um, the average scores were. And then I'll also tell you how many uh, students fell into the A category, B category, and so forth. Just so you can get a summary of what's happening in the class. I expect those grades to be very high, but yes, this is something that uh, students and instructors are interested in. What is the class average? Explain the meaning of the word average. And just in general, it just means what is the most typical score that you saw in the, in the list? What is, is really happening the most often? Sometimes doing an average doesn't really give you a true feeling for, um, for how people did on a test because there could always be, you know, there could be a lot of really good grades in the class and most of the class is doing well. And then you have three or four people that come in and just leave it blank. Don't, you know, maybe you didn't know about the test, didn't study or did not take it seriously and leave the whole thing blank. And that throws off the whole average and disguises what the true um, knowledge level was in the class. So the kind of questions you're going to be asked on a higher level than the page that I just took from the lessons note packets, which tends to just go into the mechanics, you're going to be asked to interpret the set, interpret the three scores that you're finding and ask which one best describes what's really going on in the set. That's where you're using a little bit of your reasoning skills, you're analyzing things. Okay, so like for instance, going on with this problem, um, let's see, explain, uh, I already said that this was the most typical, and I think they even talk about that in here. You can put it in your own words. It's typically what is the most typical score in the set. That's usually what people think of when they think of the word average. So in there, here they give you a list of scores here. They tell you that these are the scores that people achieved on the test. And this is another set of scores that were achieved on the test. And these are the students. And so then it says there's three different measures that we'll study in this lesson and all of them fall under the umbrella of finding an average. These are all considered different types of averages. And sometimes one of them describes the set of numbers better than the others do. Okay, so in some cases we can take on they can take on completely different values. That's true. Sometimes the mean, the median, and the mode can come out to be three different numbers. And sometimes one of them describes um, the set better than the others do. So we're going to look at that. <clears throat> So in number five in the book, it says find the mean score. Don't forget, that means just find the average. So it says find it for exam one. So here's exam one, and if you're going to find the average, you are adding all of these up. So you're going to sum all the scores together. That means add them up when you sum them together for exam one. Okay, so I'm doing all of these numbers right here, and I'm going to add those up. That's 80 plus 77 plus 68 plus, whoops, I didn't turn my calculator on. It would help if I did that. 80 plus 77 plus 68 plus 81 plus 96 plus 54 plus 75 plus 81, plus 71, plus 89, plus 56, plus 81, plus 92. Okay. Let me check those real quick. 80, 77, 68, 81, 96, 54, 75, 81, 71, 89, 56, 